Hi, this is Mr. Ye. Today I would like to go to episode two of this crash course of AP Calculus. Now uh, we are looking at um, f prime of x graph, but we're going to look at the f double prime of x from f prime of x graph. Now we're going to use that information to predict what happened to the original graph, which is right here, the red graph. Now again, we're going to address this. This one is the f prime of x graph. And then we're going to look at the notes on the right hand side. Well, um, how can we find f double prime of x from f prime of x graph? Well, here's some notes on the right hand side. It says how to find f double prime of x from f prime of x graph. And one thing I want the student to understand very well is slope is equal to derivative. And every time I always told students, you have to remember that. That's very, very important information. Now, if you want to look for the double prime of x, you need to look at the, the slope of f prime x. The reason why slope of f prime x, that means you're taking derivative of f prime x if slope is equal to derivative. Now, look at the first part of the, the red part. It says if slope of f prime of x is positive, then f double prime of x is positive also. Means it's concave up for f of x. Now on the right hand side also say if the slope of f prime of x is negative, then f double prime of x is negative as well. Means concave down for f of x. Now if double f double x changing sign at x equal to c, that means that point C is going to be your inflection point. So now we're going to try to do number line test based on here. So we're going to do number, test, number line test instead of the first derivative. We're going to base on the second derivative. So remember, the second derivative, we're looking at the different informations. We look at the information. Uh, is a function increasing or decreasing on the f prime of x? So we know if the function that's going up, like something like this, we're going to talk about this as slope field, is this is a function that's increasing. If something like a flat line, what we're going to call a horizontal tangent, which is slope is equal to zero. If something like this, it's going to be decreasing. Okay. Um, by knowing this graph, um, we're going to look at this graph. The graph is going to go in from increasing throughout the whole time. And it's going to stop right here and stop increasing anymore. So right here it's going to give me a zero because there was not increasing. It was going to reach the slope of zero. And then when you get to here, you're going to go into negative region because the function is decreasing. And you get to zero. And the last part is going to be increasing, right? Increasing after this zero. So zero occur roughly at this point around negative 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. So anything be before negative 0 0.8 from negative infinity to negative 0 0.8 Basically, your function is increasing the whole time until you get to here. It's going to give me zero. So therefore, it's, this must be positive. If function is going to go down, I use the wrong color, but that's going to give you negative between negative 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. And after 0 0.8 to infinity, it looks like this graph is going to go straight up. And then if it's going up, means function is increasing. So remember, this is the second derivative. We're looking at the slope of the first derivative. Slope also means derivative. So that means derivative of derivative. And this one is concave up. And this is concave down. And this is concave up. Now, when they change in concavity, that means this part is inflection point. point and this point is also inflection point 
So in like the first derivative, if it changes sign, is probably maximum or minimum. In this case, is the inflection point. Okay. So we can conclude with this information, we can conclude for it's concave up. Now, again, this number line test does not represent the answer. So you actually had to write it out for the people who are grading your test. It would be negative infinity to negative 0 0.8 and from 0 0.8 to positive infinity. And this is concave up. And you had to write down concave down it's going to be from negative 0 0.8 to 0 0.8. Okay. So let's look at the original graph, see what is true. They say from negative infinity to negative 0 0.8, it's going to be concave up, which is going from here roughly at 0 0.8 ish right here. Um, right here, this is a point. And before that is all concave up. And again, let's review what's concave up. That means any moment if I draw a tangent line, it's going to be below the graph. So if I draw a tangent line, guess what? It's going to be low. Draw a tangent line, it's going to be low. Draw a tangent line here, it's going to be low. So therefore, it's concave up. Now you're going to go look for between 0 0.8 into negative 0 0.8. And you can see very obviously, at this case, it looked like a U shape, upside down U shape. It has to be concave down. And I hear it go on. It's going to be concave up. So that makes this point a inflection point. So we're going to say IP, IP here. So that's it. Uh, so our prediction is correct. Also, I want to talk about the second part of the prediction, which is talk about the second derivative test. Uh, if you remember the first derivative test and second derivative test, they have something in common. The second derivative test is not testing for concavity. If you can only call it first derivative test and second derivative test, actually, they both are testing for relative maximum and minimum. So if you remember the first video, we talked about this point. And this point from here to here, I'm going to label them. It's a positive the whole way. And to get a zero, negative, and to get a zero, positive, and it's going to go up. But we also talk about at this particular point is a, according to the first derivative test, when from negative to positive, it's going to be a minimum. But also here, uh, if you pay attention, this this black dot is a belong to the air region says it's concave up. If something that's concave up, think about like U-shape that we're talking about when we do the ping the fence. Um, ping the fence that when the Mr. Miyagi asked the, 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 his uh, disciple to do the ping the fence going up like this or going down like this, this is concave up. Concave up looks like it's a minimum. So at this case, it's relative min. due to the second derivative test. Okay, now this point is concave down. Concave down, that's relative maximum. Because concave down is like this, it's relative maximum. And uh, I hear it's going to be relative minimum because it's at a region that's concave uh, up. If it's concave up, then it's minimum. Okay. So those are the things that can help you um, in the long run. Now, the second derivative test is not always tested. Usually, I will always use the first derivative test because you can see from increasing to decreasing, that's a maximum. From decreasing to increasing is a minimum. But sometimes they do require you understand the second derivative test, which is some in many times actually easier. Um, also, lastly, the inflection point is when the second derivative is changed sign, which is occur at the circle part, which is right here. Oops which is right here. So inflection point.
is that happened at x equal to negative 0 0.8 and x equal to 0 0.8 because it was sign change, right? You see the sign change, uh, base it. Okay, that'll be all. Uh, I'll wait, uh, see you next time.